Hello everybody, David Kennedy here at Canopy Realtor Association and MLS president here with yet another ordinary realtor who did some extraordinary things. Dot Munson, how are you? I'm great. <laughs> we are, are so glad you're here. Another thing, we are so glad you actually got into real estate considering all the wonderful things you did, but take us back. How did you get into real estate? When did you get into real estate? Well, I have an interesting story, I guess. When I first moved to Charlotte in 81, I bought a house and my realtor just said, this is the bathroom, this is the kitchen. And I'm like, oh my gosh, is that all they do? So I decided to go get my license to really see what real estate was all about. So I got my license in 84 um, and kept traveling for a living uh, because I was afraid I couldn't make the money I needed to make. And um, for a female, I was doing really well. Um, in 87, I was in Bangor, Maine, and it wasn't pretty in Bangor, Maine in February. So I came in, I came back from Bangor, Maine, and I thought, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I'm gonna do something different. So I marched down to a real estate office that was having um, an open house recruiting realtors and ended up going to work for Touchberry in 1987. On April Fool's Day, I started. <laughs> nice. Nice. So you started in 87. Uh, as you start doing the things that you do in, in the real estate industry, what eventually uh, drew you into uh, you know, serving here at the association and eventually into leadership? Well, I, my broker, my first broker in charge was Ann Little, now Ann Anderson. Um, she, she pushed me to, for first she pushed me into real estate because she was trying to recruit me. Um, but then she pushed me into, you, you know how to work, you know what's going on in the industry, you need to be involved and you need to have a voice. And so I give her credit for, you know, sending me to the association um, and getting me started. I actually served on the, on three, three different terms on the board of directors. And then at what point, um, after your service on the board, at what point did people start approaching you to be president? I actually ran for president twice. Uh, the first time was, I think, I don't remember the year, but it was the year that Tony Smith mm -hmm. uh, was running against me, and Tony won, rightfully so. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was really a good thing because what was going on in, in that year, he was better suited to address. I hadn't really thought about running again. David Barnhart called me, and uh, I guess they were having issues with finding somebody to run, I don't know. But I'm a pushover, so I said, sure, I'll come and interview. And, uh, and so I was nominated, and then the rest that was is it. History. The rest is history. So when the people that come behind you, or that have come after you at the association, when they say the name Dot Munson, <laughs> um, it is associated with diversity. Uh, you created a trend here at the association to weave in diversity in our leadership. What inspired you to do that? Uh, what, what, was, what was your thinking? Tell us how that came about. Well, Anne Marie and I were talking um, before I took office, of course, and uh, about what I'm passionate about. And I said, you know, I grew up on a tobacco farm with African-Americans, and they were my best friends. And I've never understood why they couldn't go to church with me. I never understood, I mean, my father insisted that they eat at the same table with us when we were working in tobacco. Mm -hmm. So my father was really an advocate that everybody is created equal. So I grew up with that mindset. and. 
as I looked at the the board of directors having served several years, um, I'm like, it doesn't look like our leader, it, the leadership doesn't look like our membership. So when I said that, Anne Marie was like, yes, <laughs> you're the one that needs to do this. So um, we just collaborated, me and, and um, the executive committee had a lot of input in how we got started with getting more people involved. So was this the beginning of the, the diversity council under your? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes. And you remember how, you know, who was your first call to be on the diversity council? Do you remember like, some of the initial leaders that you, that were diversified well, that you looked at? I, I've gotten old and I can't remember names a lot. Mm -hmm. I could tell you their faces in a heartbeat. Uh, but Karen Lindsay and Anthony Lindsay were a big part of it. Roger Parham was a big part of it. And then diversity includes young people like you. So we didn't just go by ethnicity. I can't say that right. Ethnicity, close ethnicity. enough. Ethnicity. <laughs> uh, we, we didn't just go by that. We looked at, you know, diversity in ages also. And, um, and so we started off with like sub councils and then sort of meshed it into one uh, in, in the second year that I was president. All right, passion for the, the, the Canopy Housing Foundation. So under your leadership, we almost seemed to, to uh, begin to transition from giving houses away uh, toward there's an idea uh, coming through the ranks of Realtors Care Day. Do, do, you, do you remember the dynamics of doing one and then maybe thinking about doing the other? I remember, I remember both of them um, because even before I was uh, president-elect or president, um, I think 2005 or six was the uh, last housing giveaway. And my thought as we drew the winner and everything was, we spend an awful lot that only benefits maybe one person. Why can't we spread this out and help more people? I mean, it's wonderful to win a house, but you know, there's so many out there that need. Why can't we help more people? So that was my, my thought with the last house that we gave away. So um, there were there were seeds planted. I think that we were doing the the home giveaway, and then one year maybe under Tony's leadership, um, they suspended the home giveaway and used money to to start a um, like an endowment. Mm -hmm. And you were there kind of at the beginnings of the the endowment. Right. Um, tell me how you got the the foresight to kind of or to, to put something like that together. You know, d down the road. You know, I I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like I don't you, you, remember it's, really. Sometimes yeah. as realtors, we kind of scrap a little bit together, and then spend it, and then we're right back to scrapping a little bit together, and then we spend it, and it's almost like well, in your years, you kind of had the forethought to hey, we put some money away, and it can grow down the road. Then we'll. Well, I I served on the board of directors for um, the. Um, a pottery association uh -huh. that's part of the Arts and Science right. Council. And I helped them start a foundation to grow that part of the arts. And um, in doing that gave me a little bit of insight on what needed to be done, you know, at the association to help more people. So you guys basically plug in about 300,000 in, in the can that has over the years morphed into over a million dollars mm -hmm. in the endowment. Wh wh where, wh what did you think when you found out that we finally got a million in the oh, endowment? Oh, I was ecstatic, absolutely ecstatic. Did you, did you, 
do you have in mind that hey w one day we can get a million and do you think oh, I knew we could okay I never had a doubt yeah, they, don't worry there was pressure for us to get, <laughs> <laughs> to get it <laughs> so 2007 wind, uh, winds down for you uh, you're getting ready to sunset and then um, things happen and 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 you are you're you're tapped on the shoulder to, to continue serving in 2008. What was that like? I think I did um, 158 media spots in 2008. Um, I was called out of bed several times with somebody saying, can you hold on for so-and-so? And I'm live on radio or on radio, thank mm -hmm. God, not on TV. Uh, <laughs> but um, I, and I had, I had the national news media call me and say, "Can we pick you up for a national interview?" And those were the hardest to do because you're just sitting in a room with nothing but the cameraman. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of hard to just talk to a camera. And, um, but the, the hardest thing for me and probably the most embarrassing thing for me is I was so exhausted one weekend, I just said, I'm not answering any phones, I'm not doing anything, you know, this is me time. That was the weekend that First Union went under. Monday morning, we had a meeting at the Marriott about 100 realtors there, national speaker, introduced speaker, sat down. One of the Marriott employees came over and said, are you Dot? Yes, there's someone in the lobby that wants to talk to you. So I go out to the lobby, there's two TV stations with cameras and microphones. You know, what can you tell us about First Union? I just looked at them and I said, you know what? Thank God I took the weekend off. I don't know a darn thing about it. <laughs> That's the perfect answer. They, they, they never, um, they were not going to get at any time an answer out of me that could come back and bite me because I wasn't going to make up something. So you you're inundated with, uh, with the media. What, what was, what kind of got you through to, to, to say, hey, we can, we, you know, when, when people were, were looking for hope, you know, where, where was the, where was, where was that in the midst of it back when you, you think well, about those years? It, you know, I, I'm, my background is in finance, but certainly not in repairing disasters. Um, and I just kept saying, this too shall pass. We'll get through it. It won't be easy, but not much in life is. Um, and that's how I, you know, I just portrayed, this is, these are the facts, but we'll get through it. In 2008, we had the North Carolina State Data Share Project. And so that was kind of a, a forefather of our internet data exchange that we have now right. and you were around back when we did listing books and then we got into the internet solely and then it starts now we're exchanging across the internet these listings so what what was that like kind of going around that curve it was really fun scary and fun um, you know I I enjoyed it because I'm kind of an open book and if somebody needs something from me, they just have to ask. So, you know, if somebody in Greensboro wanted to know something about one of our listings, share it. You know, our purpose when we have a listing is to get it sold for the seller at the best price. I don't care who does that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I, you already talked about some of the challenges. It was probably this the media frenzy. But what are some of the what are some of your favorite memories of of uh, serving uh, 
as, as president. You had two years. What's some of your favorite memories looking back? I have so many. Um, you know, I was glad when 2008 was over. I will admit that. Uh, I was r really reaching a real burnout right at the end. Mm -hmm. um, and Donna Anderson stepped in. <laughs> and um, in fact, I had an interview late in 2008 with one of the TV stations. And she happened to be at the association office where they were interviewing me. And so she, I just said, here, here's your new president coming mm -hmm. in. Why don't you ask her? Mm -hmm. I've run out of reasons for this. So you, when, when we think Dot Munson, we think diversity, um, you tapped Roger Parham to be the first chair of the Diversity Council. Um, you mentioned that Karen and Anthony Lindsay uh, were very instrumental in, in the, the diversity uh, getting interwoven into right. our association's culture. Anthony was the first African-American Realtor of the Year. Mm -hmm. And then in 2019, the first African-American female, it, Brenda Hayden, is elected president. And she asked you to uh, be involved in that. What did I that mean? Was, I was absolutely astounded. I was so, in fact, when she, she left me a message and when I called her back, after I hung up talking to her, I just started crying because it meant so much to me that somebody that really didn't know me recognized, you know, what had happened during my leadership. So you get, the, when I talk to some of the trailblazers, they, um, like Roger and like Anthony and, and Brenda, they open a lot of doors. They're sometimes the first people to serve in certain places. Um, did you think that, you know, Brenda recognized that, hey, you opened a door for her, you opened a door for them to, to she, be able to serve? That's, that was what she said to me. And, um, <clears throat> you know, I didn't do it by myself. You know, everybody, that was on that board of directors when I was president, embraced it and bought into it. They, you know, and so it wasn't like I'm sitting here trying to fight somebody to get this done. Everybody was ready for that. What, what does it mean to be a realtor? What did it mean back then to be a realtor? What does it mean now? How has being a realtor evolved? Well, you know, back then, the main thing it meant to me to use the word realtor is, was the code of ethics. Um, and as I progressed through life, um, it, being a realtor means even more now because I feel so much gratitude for the code of ethics and to guide us in the right way because we all make mistakes but we but some of us make mistakes on purpose <laughs> and those are the ones that really need to be um, held accountable and so I've served I don't know probably nine years on the professional standards. I'm still on it. This is my last year. Um, but, and this year's been difficult. Zoom meetings? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, the one question I asked whenever, whenever I was asked about doing this, I said, do we have to do it by Zoom? I don't want to do it if it's gonna be by Zoom. <laughs> Live and direct. <laughs> All right, I'll give you a last word here. What, what's your advice to realtors today? What advice would you give us? The biggest, best advice I could give you is do what you do for the right reason. And the right reason is not money.